Hi everyone and I think we're live. Um, welcome to my channel. For those new here, my name is Nikki. I'm an author and editor and I post videos here on YouTube about writing, editing, reading and all the other things I love. We're just a couple of days from the end of the month so I'm here now to do my uh, wrap up for you of all the books I've been reading during January. I have been having some internet issues today. I lost internet for three hours earlier when I first wanted to do the stream. So I hope everything is working now. It seems to be um, so with luck, we'll get through to the end without any problems. Um, I've had a really bumper reading month. I think I've read something like 38 books, uh, which even for me is pretty good going. Although before you all have heart attacks and get too upset by that number, uh, I would say that a good chunk of them, um, probably at least a third, um, if not closer to half, have been manga. So um, they're pretty quick, simple reads, um, half hour, 45 minutes per book. So. Uh, that's why I've managed to get through so many. Um, I'm doing my challenges for the year. So my Goodread challenge is set at 180, did I set it at, I think? Uh, so obviously I'm smashing that already. And um, also I've got my own personal challenge, um, which if you look on my Twitter, if it's a pinned tweet, if you want to join in, um, at Nikki J. Marcus, uh, do have a look. It's a 25 category challenge. I've already crossed 13 categories off of those 25. And for the remaining 12, I've got books lined up in my TBR pile for, I think, seven of them. So I've just got five left to organise and fill. So that's going really well as well. So without any further ado, I'm going to crack straight on because there is a fair bit to get through and tell you about, obviously. Uh, so first off, um, a book I read called Literary Landscapes by John Sutherland. This was actually a Christmas present from my sister. And it's a book that considers uh, famous novels throughout history pretty much from about the 18th century up to present day and the ones that have particular um, relevance to place and it kind of talks about the the real life places in which they're set uh, i'm sorry i'm not describing that very well but hopefully you, you understand what i mean um overall i gave this book three and a half stars there were things i really liked about it i loved the idea the concept was brilliant um however some of the discussion i found a bit just like pointless in some ways um uh, i mean and they, they made some interesting assertions like uh the author was quite convinced that apparently the the uh, op famous opening line that everyone would know off the top of their heads is from dickens bleak house <laughs> and i couldn't quote dickens bleak house's opening off the top of my head i could maybe do you some uh, tale of two cities or something but um it didn't really seem to me that you could declare that to be the best known and most loved opening of all times um so it did make me frown a little bit and there was an awful lot considering it's a finished published work hard copy book um there were a huge amount of typos uh and problems with the text um which kept annoying me as well so uh, that's why it gets three and a half otherwise it might have got four um but it's it's interesting if you're a big reader and you love the idea of a book that is kind of a coffee table book you dip into about the places that feature in some of your favourite books, then it's worth checking a look at, definitely. Next up, I read Japanese Tales by Royal Tyler. And this is part of Pantheon's uh, folklore series. I've previously read some of their other ones and I was interested in this one. I got it for Christmas because uh, I'm interested in Japan at the moment and I wanted to see some, some of their folklore uh, and myths. It's a really lovely collection. I gave it five stars. It's nicely organized into uh, categories. So you get five or six stories, um, say about connected to water or connected to demons. Uh, and so the book's kind of split up in that way. There's a really nice mix of tales. Um, there's plenty of action happening in them, plenty of humor. So if you're into folklore and myths, this is a really nice collection to check out. Uh, next up, sticking with Japan, actually, uh, I read Bocha by uh, Natsumi Soseki. And this is a fairly famous work. Um, it's described um, online in most places as the sort of Japanese equivalent of um, something like Catcher in the Rye and you, all the school kids read it at, at school in Japan and things. And it's about a young man who's just off to make his way in the world. He's just graduated from school himself and he's gone off to be a teacher in this remote province. And uh, deals with a variety of amusing characters along the way. Uh, I gave this four stars. Um, it's not a book that I'd rave about and rush to reread 20 million times, but it was hu hugely enjoyable. Uh, I really liked the, the prose style, the humour. Um, 
there are some nice introductory notes at the beginning that kind of explain some of the cultural concepts and things in the edition that I have. So uh, I definitely recommend it. I'm trying to read some cl classics from Japanese literature because I realised I don't actually know that many Japanese authors apart from Ruki Murakami <laughs> and a few manga authors. So I'm looking through and because I've been watching Bongo Stray Dogs as well, uh, that's a series in which all the characters are based on famous no um, novelists and most of the main cast are Japanese novelists and I'd never heard of most of them so I'm trying to go through and read some of their works to get a bit of a sense of uh, some of the history of Japanese literature from the sort of 19th 20th century. Uh, next up I read The Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver and this was a Christmas gift as well from my good friend Sarah. Um, she really loves this book. For me it was a mixed bag. I gave it three and a half stars I loved the idea of the story and I absolutely adored the narrative voices. Um, the story is told from the perspective of various characters, many of whom are young girls, um, a family, they're all sisters. And each of the characters had a very distinctive narrative voice. Um, even if you hadn't looked at the chapter header, you could tell from the prose which of the daughters was narrating at the time because they were very distinctive and that was beautifully done. Uh, the prose was nicely written. The thing for me was it just didn't grab me. I kind of, I never got excited about the story and I never really came to care for any of the characters, apart from appreciating from a distance their narrative voices. Uh, so that's why it's three and a half stars for me. Um, my friend absolutely adored it. So I think it's just one of those that's going to be a, a personal taste thing. And I thought it was well written, very well written, but it just didn't captivate me is the issue. Uh, next up. Uh, a series of three books I got from NetGalley. First of all, Drawing Manga by Jeannie Lee. Four and a half stars for me. This is a really nice uh, introductory text into Drawing Manga. Um, I like that it looked at a lot of different aspects. Some of the books in this, in this genre tend to focus on certain points, but this one had a really good mix of um, ideas and information. So if you're into, interested in starting manga, it's definitely one I recommend checking out because it had a, a lot of really good uh, stuff to offer. Next up, Drawing Faces and Expressions by Diana Kadachi. Uh, this was four stars. Uh, again, some nice information for beginners. Um, takes you through all the basic techniques, um, some good illustrations and examples. So if you're new to drawing and want to get a bit of a sense of faces and expressions, um, check this one out. The reason it got four, not five for me, is because there could have been a few more expressions, I thought. There was a, a lot of focus. Excuse me, I've got an itchy nose. There was a lot of focus on um, basic facial drawing, and I felt the expressions got kind of squeezed in at the end a bit. But it's still definitely worthwhile if you're a newbie, or, uh, newbie artist. And finally, Drawing Faces by Walter T. Foster. Three and a half stars. This is a heritage work, and they call it that on their website in the listing. Oh, excuse me, I just feel like I'm going to sneeze in a minute, so forgive me if I do. Uh, let me get rid of this banner as well. It's getting a bit irritating, isn't it? There we go. Um, it's a heritage work. It's from quite a few years ago, and you really get a sense of that in the illustrations uh, in the book, in the examples, because they are very dated. They look very 50s, <laughs> um, 40s, 50s, you know, um, so I don't know if that's going to appeal to everyone. I mean, the stuff on the techniques, fine. That's, you know, universal, works across the time, works across the ages. But uh, for me, the examples are not going to appeal to a lot of modern artists who don't really want to draw in, in that what looks very old-fashioned now style. Uh, next up, Black Butler Artworks, book one by Tavoso Yana. Five stars. Um, I had a bit of drama getting this book. I ordered a copy um, back in November uh, from eBay and it was shipped and it never arrived and never arrived. And eventually I contacted the um, seller and managed to get a refund because they, they didn't have tracking on it. And it was only coming from, it wasn't coming internationally, it was coming from Sydney and it'd been six weeks or so and it hadn't arrived. So I think it was definitely lost somewhere. I was really disappointed and I was eyeing up a copy on um, Kinokunia in Sydney and uh, the store and I didn't want to get caught up in Christmas postage so I didn't buy it but then by the time I went back to look in January they didn't have it anymore but they did have the Japanese edition and this is an artworks book um, there's a tiny bit of writing at the back when it talks about the uh, uh, just what each picture where each picture came from but essentially it's just artwork so it doesn't really matter if I get the Japanese edition or the German edition or the English edition 
And actually, the Japanese edition turned out to be slightly cheaper. So I got the Japanese edition and it came and I was so happy. And uh, it's five stars. I mean, beautiful. I'm a huge Black Butler fan. And this is a really nice artwork collection. So now I have both books one and two. Uh, in that shipment from Kinokunya, I also bought, I'm going to talk about these together, the first two light novels from Bungo Stray Dogs. So um, this is, if you've watched any of my TV and film wrap-ups, you'll know I've been watching the anime. So there's the manga, the anime, and there are these series of light novels. So these first two I was particularly keen to get because they're Dazai-centred. He's my favourite character. Uh, one of them looking at his um, background in Port Mafia before he joins the armed detective agency and the other one looking at his early days in the armed detective agency. Um, both of them are plots that have been done in the anime, so they were familiar stories, but I thought they were nicely written. I mean, they're not going to win Pulitzer Prizes or anything for novel writing, but they're enjoyable tales. If you're a fan of the show and the characters, they're great. You can actually, re you could actually read these even if you don't watch the anime or don't know the manga. Um, there's enough information in the background that you could just come to them straight to the novels and know what was going on. So um, I gave them four stars each um, and I probably will continue to buy the light novels. I'm not sure if I'm going to buy the manga yet, it's just money issues, but um, I love the anime and I'm going to at least get the light novels even if I don't end up getting the manga. Uh, next up I read from the library Lonely Planet's Best of Tokyo Guide. Um, four stars, again it's a travel guide, there's some good information, um, there's not a lot you can say about it. I'm, I'm going to Tokyo later this year. So it will be of help to have made some notes from these books, um, think about what I want to see and do, where things are. Um, so they're useful, as always, Lonely Planet Travel Guides. You can't really go wrong. They've always got decent information and are well thought out. Also from the library, I finally finished reading uh, through all of Love Stage. Uh, so this is a manga. It's a boys love manga, uh, seven volumes. And the basic premise is there's a guy who, when he was a child, um, had to last minute replace a girl actress in a little commercial that was being shot. And they dressed him up in a dress and no one knew he was a boy. And in the future, he's a bit of a homebody. He wants to be a manga artist. Um, he doesn't want to join the rest of his showbiz family in, in the theatre or on stage or anything like that. He just wants to draw manga. The only problem is he's actually pretty awful at it. <laughs> Uh, in the meantime, the people that made that initial commercial want to do a 10 years later commercial and they want to get all the original cast back. So he's asked to dress up as a girl again. He's resistant at first, but his brother talks him into it. And there he meets the young boy who he'd been paired with in this commercial 10 years ago. And this guy um, confesses that he's been in love with him for these 10 years. And he has to reveal, hey, I'm a guy. And so the story um, continues from there. Um, I won't tell you more than that and spoiler it, but uh, it's a sort of coming of age thing, um, first love and also sort of coming out because neither of the guys are gay or bisexual or know anything about themselves in that regard initially and the relationship develops and they come to learn about themselves and their feelings. It's a really enjoyable one. Um, it's so cute and I was really happy with how it ended. I think it worked, worked out well pretty well. So there was that one. Now, uh, also from the library, I read Dark Dawn, so the final part of the Nevernight trilogy by Jay Kristoff. This was four stars for me. This is a, a funny trilogy to talk about. I absolutely adored book one. I thought it was brilliant. I, I loved that those quirky footnotes and the humour and the little asides to the readers. And the story idea was great too. And I liked... Um, the concept of the sort of the shadows and the um, uh, being able to control the dark. Book two, I was a bit more not on the fence about, but I didn't love it as much as book one. But I thought it was just a you know the book two syndrome where often the second books in the trilogy are, are the ones that I'm not as keen on as the first and last. So I was expecting to get back into the groove with it in this final book, and I did a bit, but not completely. Um, the pacing felt a little bit off in this one, and I just. I didn't really care about what was happening anymore. Both the characters I liked were killed off during the trilogy. Uh, my two favourite characters were gone. Um, one of them very early on in the trilogy and the second one in this book. So that rather upset me a bit. And look, I didn't dislike it. It's still forced out. It was entertaining. I thought things wrapped up mostly well. 
overall. But um, for me, books two and three just didn't have the spark of that first book. Next up, um, from NetGalley again, I read The Honjin Murders by Seishi Yokomitsu. Uh, so this is apparently, this guy is a very well-known murder mystery writer in Japan. And this is uh, the first of his books I've read. I'm not usually a murder mystery reader, but again, because I'm reading all this, uh, all these classic Japanese authors and this guy's apparently well-known, I thought I'd give it a go. And I did enjoy it in the end. I gave it four stars. Uh, I thought the murder mystery was well handled, the story was interesting, I didn't guess everything ahead of time so it kept me on my toes and kept me turning the pages to find out what would happen. And if you're a murder mystery fan I definitely recommend checking it out as a sort of slightly different cultural uh, murder mystery. Sticking with NetGalley, I read The Thief on the Winged Horse by Kate Ma um, Maskerenhas. I hope I'm saying that right, sorry if I'm not. Uh, um, this was a three and a half star read for me. The premise of this one is, uh, it's kind of a magical realism tale and there's a family who make dolls and this particular family have the ability to put spells on the dolls so that when you touch a particular doll, depending on what spells have been put on it, you'll feel a certain emotion. And a, there's a, two main characters, I guess. Um, Lark is a young man who claims to be of an, a branch of the family that was not known about till now and he wants to be admitted and to learn how to do this sorcery. And meanwhile, one of the people who is in the inner circle, if you like, uh, is a young woman uh, called Persephone. However, there's a bit of a, a thing, a bit of a patriarchal thing going on in this family. And only the men, although the women, although it was women who started the sorcery and started the firm, these days only men are allowed to be sorcerers. Um, and she, she really wants to be one, but she's being actively discouraged and left to work the shop front. So the two of them end up teaming up to try and uh, reach their goals and uh, a lot of family drama comes in some secrets that have been hidden in the past um so this was three and a half for me i really liked the concept i thought it was brilliant but i never connected deeply to any of the characters and i thought more could have been done with the concept than was um i think that's a fair way to say it but if you're into magical realism, you like the idea of um, emotion-packed dolls, <laughs> then uh, it's definitely worth checking out. I, as I said, I didn't hate it. Um, it was entertaining, but I just kind of thought I could have got more from it. There, there was an opportunity to do more with it. And sticking with NetGalley, I read You Can Draw Manga Chibis by Witten and Lee. Uh, this is a book actually aimed at children, but I think it's actually relevant if you're an adult artist and you're coming into manga drawing and chibis for the first time. There was plenty of really good information here on proportion, how to go about doing the faces and things like that. So uh, there was also some great templates to get you started in of different poses and things like that. So that was four and a half stars for me. Um, really good resource if you want to learn how to draw chibis. Uh, sticking with NetGalley still, I read The Habsburgs by Martin Rady. So this was a non-fiction historical book looking at the Habsburgs family. Um, I'm really interested in the Habsburgs, mainly because of my interest in Sissy um, and Rudolf. But uh, there's actually quite an interesting collection of people in the family um, going way back. Uh, Rudolf II in Prague and obviously the Spanish Habsburg line as well. And I thought this book on the whole was good. I gave it four stars. It felt a little bit dry here and there. Um, there are times when I wished he could have made it a bit more entertaining, but the information within was obviously really well researched, nicely presented, and although some of the stuff I already knew, there, was, there were things that were new to me, which I really enjoyed learning about. Next up, I've got to flick through my list. I read Heroes in Love by David C. Dawson, and this is an LGBT contemporary romance. Um, basic premise is there's a guy who is formerly an actor and now works in social services and he meets um, a musical director and they begin this romance but both of them have a lot of baggage going on um, with sick mothers past relationships that are still causing them problems and things and it's whether they can work through that to make their love last if you like I gave this four stars I liked the story I liked the characters I did think that the two main leads were a little bit too similar at times. I would have liked to have seen one of them maybe take the lead a little bit more. Um, and at the end, I 
I think if, if you're someone who only likes happy ever after, this is probably not one for you. Although it's not, it's not a sad story, but there's a lot of uh, drama, a bit of angst going on in it. And the ending is probably more happy for now. So as long as you don't mind that, it's worth checking out. But it's not a really cutesy, happily ever after ending. So just bear that in mind if you're going to give it a try. But it's well written and um, it had an engaging plot and kept me reading. Uh, next up, I read from Net Galley again. Uh, I, sorry, I should say Heroes in Love was a book I received as a review copy from the author. And from NetGalley, I read A History of Medicines We Take by Cartwright and Armstrong. And this is a book that is looking, as the title suggests, at the history of medicine, uh, right back through, you know, Mesopotamia up to the modern day. Uh, it was really entertaining and interesting. Uh, it talks about what types of medicines we were taking, what, what sort of cures we've been trying, um, how, we're take, how we were taking them, um, the growth of the pharmacy and um, pharmaceutical companies and things like that. So it's a very uh, fascinating non-fiction history read if you're interested in the history of medicine um, or in the history of science. I definitely recommend it. It's a four-star read for me. And moving on, we're coming towards the end. Um, I've just got three graphic novels or manga from, to read. All of these came from NetGalley. First up, Not Your Idol, Volume 1 by Aoi Makino. Um, this one is a contemporary story and the main character is a girl who was previously an idol but she was attacked by a fan and so she left the group and is now not exactly hiding out as a boy but she dresses as a boy and keeps to herself, doesn't do anything girly anymore, and is uh, working now under, or living now under her original name and not her state name. Um, so it's an interesting piece because it looks at themes of uh, what is, what makes someone feminine or masculine, um, looking at gender roles, um, and dealing with past trauma and gender expectations. So I thought it was a really interesting story. Uh, I liked the characters, I liked the premise. The pacing was good, it was really well told. And when it ended, I was keen to find volume two and read on to find out what would happen next. So I gave this one four stars. I think it's uh, a story that's entertaining. Um, it's gonna be a bit of a suspense thriller, I think, in the end. But it's also got an interesting message to get across um, and quite a thought-provoking story as well. Next up, I read volume one of Demon Slayer, um, Kimetsu no Yaiba by Koiharu Gotoge. I hope I'm saying that one right. I'm not sure about that one. Um, this was a three and a half star read for me. I've been seeing Demon Slayer advertised on Crunchyroll for the anime quite a lot. And so when I saw this on NetGalley, I was interested to see um, what it was going to be about, um, get a bit more of a sense of the story. I really liked the plot. And I like the characters. It moved in a nice pace. There was plenty of action. The only reason it got three and a half stars and not four for me was because the artwork, the style of the artwork didn't particularly appeal to me. Um, I tend to like ones that look more beautiful. <laughs> um, but that's, that's just a personal opinion for me on the artwork. Um, the artwork may well appeal to other readers. But certainly the story was very strong. And I'd be interested in reading more, but um, I wouldn't rush out to buy it. And finally, um, a shoujo one, uh, Prince Freya, Volume 1, by Keiko Ishihara. And this one was a four-star read for me. This is a sort of, I'm going to say fantasy historical. We haven't had strong fantasy elements yet, but it has a bit of a fantasy feel about it. It's set in a kind of medieval-ish, European-ish setting. Um, Freya is a young girl who bears a striking resemblance to the prince and their country is under threat from another another nation. And when the prince dies, Freya has to pretend to be him and take on his role to keep things moving. So I, I liked Freya as a character. She, she's a bit uh, naive and cowardly and scared and, at first, but I think there's great potential for her to develop during this story and for her to come to terms with who she is and um, really, I guess, really make strides in moving forward with her life, taking control of things. She's been very passive in the past. Uh, the supporting characters are her um, her sort of brothers um, and her now new 
aide, if you like. He's kind of the one who's by her side, bodyguard slash aide. Um, they were all quite intriguing figures, and so I'm interested to see where they would go. And yeah, this was four stars. It's definitely one that maybe I won't rush out to buy, but if I get the opportunity to read more, I would like to do so. So, whew, there we go. That was my wrap up. I've got a few manga I'm still ongoing with. Um, Tokyo Ghoul Ray. Um, I've got one on request. I think it's volume 12 on request at the library. I think that's right, is it? Yes, I read 11. Um, after that, I'm going to be waiting for 13 to 16 until the library get them and I can borrow them. So it's going to take a while to finish that one. I'm still reading Loveless. I've got one more volume coming from the library on that. But then I don't think they've got the final volume, so I'm going to need to see if I can find somewhere where I can read those. And I'm also continuing with Platinum End, uh, which I've read up to number four now. And I've got five to ten um, en route. I've bought them from the book depository. They're coming to me. So uh, I'll probably be able to read those during February, which will bring me up to date because volume 11 will come out in a few months time. Um, waiting anxiously for the release of volume 29 of Black Butler as well. It came out in Japan at the end of December. Uh, there's no news yet on a release date, but I'm hoping by about June, July, it'll be coming out in the English release. So I'll be getting that as soon as it does. That's all for now. I've still got a ton of books here to read. Um, I think there's something like 25, 26 or so sitting in my TBR pile. So I shall look forward to getting to a few of those during February. I'll be back again at the end of next month with another of these videos. But of course, you can join me before then uh, with some of my other content here on the vlog. Um, I've got a few tags and things I'm doing during February. Plus, of course, my monthly drama talk live streams with my good friend Alina. Uh, the next one of those is on my channel. Um, I'll tell you the date. It will be on the 9th of February on the Sunday. So I hope you'll join us then. I'll end there for now. Uh, bye, everyone.